Hello students, uh, this is Professor Vincent Osaya. Welcome to my class. And this is uh, part one of chapter four presentation. Chapter four, risk assessment. Recall in chapter one, we indicated that uh, there are three important concepts related to uh, the performance of conducting an audit. Number one, we talk about audit risk. Number two, we talk about uh, materiality and we also talk about uh, evidence. We said that these three concepts are very interrelated and they are very fundamental to any uh, performance of uh, a financial statement audit. We also talk about each of them relatively uh, in detail. In chapter four, we are going to zero in on the uh, audit uh, risk. So the question is, what is audit risk? In a very simplified, non-technical terms, we say that audit risk is the risk that the auditor will complete his work and conclude that everything is fine, whereas everything is not okay. So that is the definition of audit risk from an ordinary English standpoint. But let's take a look at the technical definition of uh, audit risk. Here we say that it is the risk that, that, that uh, an auditor expresses an inappropriate audit opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated. What does that mean? In other words, it is the risk that the auditor would unintentionally or unknowingly have failed to qualify uh, 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 his opinion on financial statements that are materially misstated. When that happens, then, of course, the auditor would have conducted an ineffective uh, audit. Now, how does this audit uh, risk happen? We say that whenever you agree to take on uh, audit engagement or to perform audit or financial statement of a company, automatically you assume an uh, audit risk. Now, recall, we say that uh, because of the nature of evidence that we, 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 we gather and because of the nature of how we go about doing our work, auditors are giving reasonable assurance that the financial statements are not uh, materially misstated and not uh, absolute uh, assurance. Now, that being said, another question is, here is a good uh, analogy in terms of the definition of audit risk. We did talk about, uh, 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 just like driving, when you drive, you are taking a risk of having an accident. Either you hit somebody or somebody hits you. And the only way you can actually avoid that risk is don't drive at all. So audit risk cannot be eliminated. You cannot uh, go without it. The only way you can prevent uh, or eliminate audit risk in its entirety is don't take off an uh, audit uh, engagement. Now, having said that, let's take a look at where this uh, risk might be coming from. We said that from the assertion level, we talk about assertion a great deal a few weeks ago. We said that assertion is claim are made by management as reflected on the financial statements. So this risk could come from financial statement level from the standpoint that almost anything could go wrong in the financial statement as a whole, or the risk can come from individual account balance or disclosure uh, uh, level. Now, again, another important thing that I want to uh, bring to your attention here is the fact that uh, 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 auditors are not uh, providing uh, absolute uh, assurance, but uh, a reasonable assurance that the financial statements are not uh, materially misstated. Moving along, let's take a look at the audit risk model. Now, here we are, we, we call this the audit risk model. Here, it is a method of looking at the pieces that make up audit risk. We said that there are three elements or three pieces that make up audit risk. Number one, IRO risk stands for inherent risk, CRO control risk, and detection risk. And the question is, why are we looking at all these pieces? We are going to look at all these pieces and examine them very closely in order for the auditor to determine how he or she needs to go about doing 
his work. In other words, uh, by examining this model, it helps us to determine the scope of our work, the nature of the evidence that we are going to gather, the timing of the test, and the extent, how far do we really need to go in doing our test or performing different type of tests that we conduct. So that is one of the reasons or the main reasons why we examine the different pieces that make up uh, all the uh, risk. Now, so here we are going to assess the level of audit risk and how to address the risk properly during the course of doing our audit. That being said, let's take a look at the pieces that make up the audit risk. Number one, we said inherent risk. What is inherent risk? Uh, first of all, just the word, uh, the definition of the word uh, inherent, it simply means uh, by nature, uh, uh, belonging by nature. In other words, something is just there by nature. One of my favorite examples is when you are a student uh, in the university, one of the things that you cannot avoid by nature is just there is everybody has to take a test. Everybody has to prepare for exam. So inherent risk, now how does that relate to inherent risk? We said that inherent risk is the possibility of the financial statement being materially misstated even without taking into consideration the controls that we put in place. In other words, because of the nature of the environment of the client, one or two things might possibly go wrong, either because of the nature of the business or because of the industry that the company is operating in. It could be one of several things. Here is a good example. If your client has operations all over the world, at the end of the year, when your client put financial statements together, they have to deal with the complexity or the accounting issues relative to translation of a, a foreign currency. But if the company is right here in the United States of America, you don't have to deal with the complexity relative to the accounting for foreign uh, uh, currency uh, translation. So if your client, if that is your client, so by nature, one or two things might possibly go wrong in that area. So that is what we mean by inherent risk. Now let's take a look at the second component, control risk. We already talked about, when we talk about control risk, here we are talking about internal controls. We said that management put controls in place in order to prevent, uh, <coughs> in order to uh, uh, make sure that employees are doing what they are supposed to be doing, uh, to make sure that everybody is complying with laws and regulation. Uh, internal control also help us to uh, prevent uh, material misstatement or detect it if it happens. So those are some of the things that the internal control uh, uh, will do for us. So when management put internal control in place, we hope that the internal control is properly put in place. So the question is, what is control risk? It is the risk that the controls in place <coughs> might not be able to detect or prevent uh, uh, errors or, or fraud uh, uh, in, in relationship to detecting a material uh, uh, misstatement in the financial statements. So that is control risk, the, the, the risk that the controls might not be able to do what they are supposed to do. Now let's take a look at the third component, and that is the detection risk. We said that that is the risk that the auditor uh, 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 tests and other performance or procedures that the auditor perform would not be able to deter uh, material uh, misstatement. So moving along, the, uh, those are the definition of the three uh, components of uh, uh, audit uh, risk. Now let's take a look at uh, the first two components, inherent risk and control risk. As you can see on the slide, those two risks combined, we call them risk of material misstatement. Meaning those two elements or components are function of the client's environment. The auditor does not have control over those two risks, the risk of material misstatement. And let's take a look at the third component, detection risk. We said that 
that risk that the that is the risk that the auditor will not detect a, a misstatement. Auditor has control over the thought component, that is the detection risk, because the auditor can choose to do more work, can choose to do more testing, so on and so forth. Now, in connection with the detection risk, as you know, in audit, we do a lot of sampling. So that's a situation whereby we test more than 100% of the population. So there is a risk element to that. What does that mean? That means the sample that we selected and tested might not be a true representative of the entire population. So that is a risk. And of course, we established earlier on that it is not possible for us to test every transaction because it is not only too costly, but of course, uh, uh, it takes so much time. Then we also have a non-sampling risk. Those are risks that are not related to sampling. For example, the auditor uh, did not properly interpret uh, audit result, or the auditor wound up using the wrong audit procedure during the course of doing his work. So those will be considered as a non-sampling risk. Bottom line is the auditor has control over the detection risk and the auditor can uh, do one or two things to minimize uh, that risk. Moving along, let's take a look at the uh, audit risk. What is audit risk? Here we said that uh, 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 audit risk is connected, excuse me, engagement risk is connected to audit risk because when an auditor expresses an opinion on financial statements that are materially misstated, then the auditor has not effectively done his job. The potential ramification is somebody might rely on those financial statements, make decisions on those financial statements, and if eventually it is uncovered that, those, uh, that the audit was not properly done, the auditor is then being exposed. So the auditor exposure or the consequence or the ramifications of audit risk is engagement risk, meaning the auditor might be exposed to financial loss and damage to professional reputation. So you might wind up with a lot of litigation, so on and so forth. Now, moving along, let's take a look at uh, using the audit risk model. In other words, let's take a look at how we actually use the audit risk model or the formula, right? So first of all, we set a plan level of audit risk such that an opinion can be issued on the financial statement. So what does that mean? So remember now, the big picture is the audit risk. So we evaluate and assess a particular area based on our evaluation and our assessment. We say that we set a particular level of audit risk, the risk that we are willing to take such that upon the completion of the audit, we'll be able to confidently issue an opinion on those financial statements whereby they are not uh, materially misstated. Now the second thing is, we assess the risk of material misstatement. In other words, based on our evaluation of the inherent risk, now we are going to take a look at understanding the nature of the business, the kind of industry that uh, they are in, the complexity of some of the accounting issues, so on and so forth. And we are also going to take a look at uh, how well their internal control system is put in place we, we, we take a look at all of those factors and assess these two elements. Uh, uh, by the time we are done assessing the inherent risk and control risk, that now enable us to size it up and see whether the, uh, 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 the, the likelihood of a financial statement be materially misstated in relationship to our uh, assessment. Then we use the audit risk equation to solve for the appropriate level of detection risk. So here is the formula. At the bottom of this slide, we say auditors use this level of detection risk to design audit procedures that will reduce audit risk to an acceptable level. Now, I think uh, <coughs> this would be a good point to cut off uh, part one of this presentation in part two we are going to demonstrate mathematically how these pieces come uh, into play. 
in terms of the audit uh, risk uh, model.